Hello there. Welcome to the fourth devlog on Labyrinthophobia. I'm Digital Kingdom Editor, or DKE for short. In this devlog, I'll go over what I've accomplished since the last devlog, and what I'm hoping to achieve by the next one. Timestamps are on screen now if you'd like to jump to a particular section in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. The footstep bug from last devlog has been resolved. With this fix, there's no longer any way for you to sound like you're running when you're actually not, and I'm very happy to say that it was a very easy fix. The stamina bar has also been updated a little bit, and I think it looks much better than before. I'm still uncertain about the placement of the stamina bar being in the bottom center of the screen, but for now, I think it looks pretty good. Comment down below if you have any suggestions about where the stamina bar should go, and I'll give it a try to see if it works. Both enemy types can now catch you, and some stuff does happen, but it's still in the early stages, and I want it to look and feel better later down the line than what it currently is at this point in time. To demonstrate, let's say the parasite catches you. Your player can no longer move and you rotate towards the parasite. The parasite for now just has an animation play where he looks like he's smacking you on the head and then the screen fades to black and the level restarts. This is just some early development of what happens when you're caught. And of course I do intend to update what happens when you get caught but for now this will work for general testing purposes. The Weeping Angels actually had a bug that I was unaware of for a bit, but I got it fixed. The bug that occurs only happens when you have two or more Weeping Angels in the level. They start out fine and both will move towards the player, but when you look at both of them and then look away, it only lets one Weeping Angel move and the other is just stuck forever. Big shout out to Mindbrain, an Unreal Engine 4 moderator who was kind enough to suggest a fix for me that worked like a charm when I implemented it. Now my Weeping Angels work as intended, even if there is more than one in the level at a time. It's extremely basic, but I do have ammo functionality now. To begin, you'll notice that in the bottom left of the screen there are two numbers. The left number is your magazine ammo, and the right number is your reserve ammo. When you shoot the pistol, the left number decreases by one, and when you hit R to reload your pistol, it will take a second, but it will reload the clip and subtract however much ammo you need to refill your magazine capacity. This ammo system is working pretty well, but I have yet to add in any sort of reload animations yet, but that'll come later down the line. I have also added slight recoil to the pistol. Whenever you shoot the pistol, it will recoil a tiny bit, and the recoil values will be random in order to give the recoil a little more variation. I've also added more movement animations, so instead of looking like you're running forwards all the time, I've got animations for moving backwards and sideways now, so it looks just a bit better. I added in doors that can be open if you interact with them. These doors will serve as the exits to the maze, so when you find one, you can interact with it, it'll open up, and you can walk right on through it to exit the maze. I've also made a randomized exit spawner. When the game is started, the exit spawn point is randomly selected between different possible spawn locations in the maze. Once it decides where the exit will go, it will spawn the door that you can interact with, and a hole is created in the wall of where the exit is spawned. Once it decides where the exit will go, it will spawn the door that you can interact with, and a hole is created in the wall of where the exit is spawned so you can open the door and walk right through it. As you can see on screen, each time that I start the level, the exit spawns at various locations, and if we quickly run over to one of these spawned exits, we can interact with the door and exit the maze once we walk through it. This exit door is supposed to lead to the shop, but I haven't implemented that just yet, although it's hopefully coming soon. I've done a lot for this devlog, so let's wrap it up by explaining what I want to do by the next devlog. Parasite Investigating Noise Whenever sounds are made within a certain range of it, I want the parasite to be able to investigate the noise. As of right now, it's a bit too easy to just run behind the parasite without any real consequences, so I want the parasite to be able to investigate any noises that it can sense. Shop spawning and design. For now, this is going to focus more on designing the shop instead of being able to actually buy things, as well as being able to spawn in the shop so it's connected to the exit door. And all you have to do is just walk through the exit door, which means you've completed the maze and can now access the shop before moving on to the next maze. Despawning a maze when completed. Once you enter through the exit door, I want the maze and the components inside of it to be despawned in order to save resources and help with frame rate. As I'll be spawning in the shop, I think that this is a necessary feature in order to ensure that the game's performance is fine throughout playing the game. Now with some more slow but steady progress of Labyrinthophobia. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all things with Labyrinthophobia. My name is Digital Kingdom Editor, DKA for short, and I'll see you in the next one.